Jocelyn Brooke was a British writer, born in 1908 at Radnor Cliff, Sandgate, Folkestone, Kent. The third child of wine merchant Henry Brooke, he was first educated at King's School, Canterbury, before being transferred to Bedell's School following his two escape attempts from King's. He then studied at Worcester College, Oxford, but left after a year and soon began working in several London bookshops in succession. At the outbreak of World War II, he enlisted in the Royal Army Medical Corps, where he would remain as a regular service member until 1948. His book, The Military Orchid, providing him with enough funds to be able to retire from the army. He briefly moved to London, but soon he grew tired of city life and then moved again to the countryside, living at Ivy Cottage in Bishopsbourne with his childhood nurse. Among his varied output, he published books on botany, collections of poetry, novels, even a children's book entitled The Wonderful Summer, as well as a book with the delightfully batty title of The Crisis in Bulgari, or Ipsen to the Rescue, which, to quote, surrealistically combines Victorian fantasy and parody. Brooke died at Bishopsbourne in 1966 due to complications of atherosclerosis. The Image of a Drawn Sword was one of Brooke's more acclaimed novels, published in 1950 at the beginning of his professional career. Now, when one starts off describing work as Kafkaesque, one should really be careful and not shoot himself in the foot. Jocelyn Brooke's The Image of a Drawn Sword has been described as being Kafkaesque by the press, and even the publishing company King Penguin couldn't refrain from selling the book by conjuring up images of the old yet ageless Prague Jew. In response to all this, I just have to say I find this comparison somewhat exaggerated. Kafka didn't invent the idea of the fantastic creeping into one's life unawares, and claiming that anything that does so is in fact Kafkaesque is a little bit silly. Especially since Brooke's approach to this seems to be a little bit more dissociated and definitely not as panicky or dreadful as the typical protagonist of a Kafka story. The story, if anything, feels a bit anemic on the whole quote-unquote Kafkaesque front. At the beginning of the story we have Renard, the title character finding himself experiencing odd moments where his lethargy seeps over into his slow unravelling of his personality and consciousness. However, one day he finds a stranger knocking at his door in the middle of the night. This stranger will soon precipitate Renard into joining a bizarre and surly lot of men engaging in a weird militaristic sort of workout regiment. Initially, Renard is overjoyed as this provides him with the welcome break from the tedium of civilian life. But then suddenly he starts walking one day and finds himself at a completely different time in some point in the future without any knowledge of the intervening weeks and months. This happens several more times, the continued and increased befuddlement of Renard until he finds himself thrown into a strange future where war is imminent, yet no one will tell him why or even who they would go to war against. The only solution Renard can think of is to try and find his old friend, the one who had initiated him into the military life in the first place, as he is now a high-ranking officer and hopes that said friend could provide him with some answers. Now, the book can either be interpreted as Renard being mentally unstable and thus blotting out large sections of his past and of his memory, or there are some really inexplicable time slip shenanigans afoot. The novel doesn't directly say which, but there is the fact that Renard seems to move through space smoothly, and it is only time where he seems to suddenly jump forward without any warning. A quick and enjoyable read, though this kind of story had been done in a superior fashion in Ruffman Todd's The Lost Traveller, among others. There is also a connection to Brooke's writing which Penguin Books somehow failed to notice, namely that Sword's Dog Inn, located in the untraceable fictional region of Clamber Crown, is subject of Brooke's semi-autobiographical novel The Dog at Clamber Crown from 1955. Having nothing more to say, I will end my review as suddenly as Brooke ended his book.